Ancient Egyptian tombs inside the Grand Canyon? That's what an explorer found right before the government closed the area off from the public. Way back in 1909, the Arizona Gazette reported a story of a miner, G.E. Kincaid, looking for gold in the Grand Canyon. While journeying down the river, he came across what looked like steps carved into the canyon side, so he decides to check it out. The steps, he claimed, were perfectly carved, not a natural formation, and as he approached the top, he came across a man-made cave entrance, which do exist all around the Grand Canyon, but this one was different. He went inside, turned on his light, and saw tunnels chiseled with perfect architecture and more branching paths deeper inside. He kept going until he comes across an enormous room several hundred feet long. In the middle stood a giant statue of what looked like Buddha holding lotus flowers in each hand. Now Buddha has nothing to do with ancient Egypt which actually makes this more of a mind trip but we're getting there I promise. This looks like it was an ancient underground city which actually exists all around the world in places like Derinkuyu in Turkey. Kincaid was amped. This got to be the discovery of the century so of course he leaves and asks for funding to explore more from the Smithsonian, the world-leading museum research and education institute, the gatekeeper of archaeological findings made by the U.S. government, who gladly agreed. They send a team of scientists and miners led by S.A. Jordan to fully excavate this mind-blowing discovery. With this team back in the expedition, Kincaid goes back to the caves and realized he barely scratched the surface. He left extremely detailed journal entries describing the whole excavation, with hallways up to 12 feet wide and large oval doorways throughout the underground complex. During this excavation, they find full-size rooms which appear to have been made for dining, winding halls with detailed architecture, and artifacts like pottery, urns, and to their surprise, copper tools and swords along with rooms built for metalwork. All signs of an ancient civilization far more advanced than what should have been here at the time. But then they find this, Egyptian hieroglyphs carved and painted on the walls and stone tablets with similar hieroglyphs engraved. And then finally what appeared to be a crypt filled with little cubby holes in the walls, each containing mummies of giant humanoids, some even being reported as reptilian looking. Yeah, Egyptian tombs in the Grand Canyon. They call this complex the Citadel, and by the end of their expedition, hundreds of rooms were discovered, estimated to house up to 50,000 people. They determined that, of course, this must be the remains of an advanced civilization that were here before the natives, and somehow brought the knowledge of the ancient Egyptians from the other side of the world into the Americas. G.E. Kincaid and S.A. Jordan presented their Egyptian hypothesis to the Smithsonian, who obviously did not like the sound of that and denied further excavation. Pfft, Egyptian hieroglyphs spotted outside of Egypt? Absolute nonsense, right? Maybe, but this isn't the only time that such a claim was made. Like the Gosford hieroglyphs carved into rock in Australia, which look almost identical to that of the Egyptians. It's hard to tell exactly how old they are, but of course they're labeled a hoax. Someone else carved them here a few years ago to trick the world. Or the written language of the Mi'kmaq, a Native American tribe that lived along the Atlantic coast, which shares a baffling number of similarities with Egyptian hieroglyphs, two cultures that allegedly had no contact among each other. This one was just a coincidence, of course. Just like the Fuente Magna Bowl found in Bolivia with proto-Sumerian and cuneiform script writing on it. That's ancient Mesopotamian writing uncovered in South America. So artifacts of ancient Middle Eastern civilizations found in the Americas have happened, but we just ignore them. To this day, the Smithsonian denies this expedition in the Grand Canyon ever happened. And the stories of the explorers are of course deemed a hoax. So is any of this real? The native indigenous people seem to think so. Native American tribes like the Navajo, Zuni, Acoma Pueblo have legends of a race that existed there before them. Even citing the Grand Canyon specifically as the place where the first people people emerged from. These myths all speak of either a race of reptilians, yes, we're in lizard people territory now, or giants that civilized the area, building underground cities to protect themselves. The Hopi tribe even have a story about a sky god who, after a series of cataclysms, emerged from a moving star and took the tribe to underground caves in the Grand Canyon region to protect them. The Havasupai people believe the canyon is the home of the Supai, the spirit of their ancestors. The Piute culture got the legend of the Havmusubs, who also lived in an underground city, and had silver tubes that shot lightning that could end a man's life and silver canoes in the sky, which all line up perfectly with the flood myths, not to mention UFO sightings, around the world where godlike beings descend from the sky and gift civilization to humanity. And is exactly why the Smithsonian cringes at the thought of admitting to this. Because it would imply that cultures like the ancient Egyptians had overseas contact with the Americas, completely destroying their current narrative of isolationism, which states that groups of humans evolved independently of each other all around the world. Today, this section of the Grand Canyon has some interesting official names for the formations found here, like the Tower of Set, Horus, Isis Temple, Ra, the Cheops Pyramid, all Egyptian names, and these formations have the weirdest, most interesting shapes, unlike those found in any other canyon. Alright, enough yapping. Where is this cave, and can't we just go to it today to prove this once and for all? Really thought it was that easy, huh? The exact area where the citadel would be found has, of course, been marked off limits by the government. The Grand Canyon has hundreds of man-made caves all over it that are confirmed real, with only 30 that have been officially mapped out, some of which are sealed with steel gates for safety. When amateur explorers 
explorers tried checking out the region, planes and helicopters would appear out of nowhere over areas designated as no-fly zones, some claiming they can even spot remnants of pyramids and other ancient structures in the cliffs of the canyon, implying the Grand Canyon may actually be the site of a bustling ancient city. Rumors of ancient Egyptian remains and underground cities in the Grand Canyon, government closes the area off, and then planes and drones are found scouting the area. Are they hiding something from us, or am I just gonna get stitched into another Mr. Know-It-All debunking video?